Hello, welcome to Music Theory Grade 1 Week 8. Today we're talking about beaming notes and beaming rests. Beaming notes which are smaller than a crochet, which are quavers and semi-quavers, have tails attached to their stems. To make music easier to read, we normally group these notes together in, in, uh, together in complete beats. To do this, we join the tails together, making them into a straight line. We call this line a beam. And the nodes are called beamed nodes. Making beamed nodes. Nodes with one tail. Quavers and dotted quavers have one beam. Semi-quavers have two tails, so they have two beams, which are drawn quite close together. Here are some examples of beamed quaver nodes. This is the beam and two quavers beamed together. Same quavers, two beams drawn close together and they are beamed together. Quavers can be beamed to same quavers like this. This is how we do semi-quavers to quavers. Semi-quavers, quaver. We can also do dotted quaver to semi-quavers with beams like this. Dotted quaver and a semi-quaver. Notice that the lower semi-quaver beam is quite short. This is a cut off beam. We call this we call in this a cut-off beam. Cut-off beams should be about as wide as the note head. They can point in either direction, depending on which side of the quiver they are on. Here's another example of beam notes which have cut-off beams. Cut-off beams. Beaming and, and beats. In the time signatures, you need to know for grade 1 music theory, 2, 4, 3, 4, and 4, 4, the beat is always represented by a crochet time value. In other time signatures, the beat could be a quiver or minimum. However, in this lesson, we are assuming the beat is always a crochet. In each bar, some notes are given more emphasis than others. This subtle accent is what gives music its feeling of pulse. Beats are categorized as follows. Strong beat. This is the strongest accent in the bar and falls right at the beginning of the bar. Weak beat. These are the other crochet beats of the bar. Off beat. These are any note which falls in between the strong beat and the weak beat. The rules of correct beaming depend on the time signature in use. You will need to learn the rules for each time signature separately as well as these general rules. The quavers and semi-quavers should be uh, joined together to make the crochet bit obvious. Beams never cross over the bar lines. The first note of a beamed group must never fall on an off beat unless it's uh, preceded by a rest or a dotted note. Beaming in 2-4 time. In 2-4 time, there are two crochet beats per bar. There is one strong beat, which is the first beat of the bar. The second crochet beat is the weak beat. Nodes are normally beamed together to make up one crochet beat. Here are some examples. Nodes are normally beamed together to make up one crochet beat. We have 2-4. And we have beamed, and they give us a crochet. We have beamed note, they need to give us a crochet. Crochet. As well as, including the rest, they give us crochets. Even the rest. If there are four quavers in a bar, they can all be beamed together. Two, four, 
either way is correct can beam them together beaming in three four time in three four time there are three crochets per bar there is one strong bit which is the first bit of the bar followed by two weak bits the quavers can be beamed right across two or three whole crochet bits but the first note of the group must fall on the bit not on an off bit So we're looking at three four and we have beamed quivers and a crochet same as this one as the same they're the same but this this we should not do this we should not do in the above bars all are correct except the last bar in the last bar the fourth quaver falls on an off beat groups with semi quavers are normally only beamed to make up one crochet beat maximum here are some examples you can see three four Beaming in 4 4 time. In 4 4 time, there are 4 crochet beads per bar. The first bit of the bar is a strong bit. The second and fourth bits are the weak bits, but the third bit is a secondary strong bit. This means that the first bit of the bar has the strongest accent. The third bit has a slightly weaker accent, and the second and fourth bits receive no accent. This is reflected in the beaming you can beam together quavers which make up two crochets worth of beads but only if they fall on beads one or two or three four you cannot beam together quavers or same quavers which cross from beads two to three bar one is correct because the first quaver in each group falls on the strong beat. Bar 2 is correct because the first quaver is in the first group falls on a weak beat and the first of the second group on a, second, uh, on a strongest beat. This makes the secondary strong beat obvious. Bar 3 is incorrect because the third quaver in the group should have a stronger accent than the first quaver. The importance of the third bit of the bar is hidden. Groups which contain semiquivers should normally equal a maximum of one or two crochets. Here are some examples. 4-4. Four, four. Groups which contain semiquivers should normally equal a maximum of one or two crochets. So here's our example notice that the first four nodes in bar one are all beamed together making a group worth a minimum in bar two there is one unbeamed quiver it can be beamed to the next group because that group needs to start on the third bit of the bar to show the place of a secondary strong bit Bar 3 looks complicated, but it's not really. The first uh, strongest bit is the first rest plus the beamed semi quiver and quiver. Together they make up one crochet bit. The second weak bit is made up of three beamed semi quivers and a semi quiver silence. The third secondary strong bit begins on the dotted quiver and the final weak is the same as the second bit in bar three it would be better not to beam the notes into groups worth a minute because it will make it much more difficult to see which of the notes falls on the second and fourth bit thank you for watching and let's meet again next